Welcome in, everybody. God bless you. Hope you guys have had a great week. I took a few days off uh, just to kind of just rethink some things. And, you know, I've been doing a lot of ministry. And today we went to a house, blessed the home, prayed over it. And, you know, the family is going through some things. And it, it, it's pretty it's pretty private. But, hey, it's what ministry is. Um, I have a heart to really serve. And a part of me didn't want to go because I had so much going on, okay? So, but I kept asking God and just praying and God put this family in my heart. And it's not that I didn't want to go because I didn't care about them, but because I had so much going on. And I think sometimes we get into a point in our lives where we we're like, we got this and that and that. But then when ministry calls, when your calling comes from God, I like to say this, <laughs> your, your career, your, your, your alarm or your career, you wake up by your alarm, but your calling, you're, you're pretty much woken up because of of the calling from like straight from God. It's, it's, it's the calling that wakes you up. It's not your alarm clock. Okay. Career wakes you up. An alarm wakes up your, you through a career. But when you have a calling from God, Ooh, it's, it's something stronger. And that's where we got to find our purpose. I mean, we were made on purpose for purpose. And that's what I had to kind of share the person, you know, they had, they had a children and the children were kind of going through some stuff. And obviously they, they try to share to share a lot of people, and they don't they don't have too many people out here in Las Vegas. Um, they're from California, so called me. Uh, we've been good friends. They have great spirits, and that's the thing. When God gives me peace to help certain people, and I pray about it, I'm gonna do what God wants me to do because out of it comes fulfillment and joy. And I'm actually glad as I was walking out that house because we were playing, praying, we were anointing it, praying over the whole family, and. God really showed up. And that's why I, I'm always thanking God. The Holy Spirit's always moving. And as long as you're allowing it to move and you have like such that pure heart. And then they saw my shirt, stay humble. And, you know, it says, it says, blessed are those that are pure in the heart for they shall see God. So God knows your heart. God knows what you uh, desire as well. But we got to ask God, hey, Lord, what do you desire through me and how can I be used? And that was a moment. It was a great testimony. I know that we planted a lot of spiritual seeds and I'm just rejoicing. God is good. I want to talk about this today. It's about how nobody can stop you from God's plan. It is only the person that is wearing your shoes, thinking your thoughts, sitting in your chair. If you're sitting, um, you might be watching this in the car or at a desk or maybe at the gym, whatever, right? You're, it, it is you that has, the that, that has the decision to follow Jesus. It is God that has given us the free will to either follow our feelings or follow our faith in Jesus Christ. I like to say faith over feelings, no matter what. And when I told, when I told God, I said, you know what? I, I surrender God. And that level of surrender is in direct proportion to the level amount of intimacy you're willing to have with the Lord, because God honors that God continuously honors our faith, honors our obedience. And as we decrease, it says in John three 30, he must increase, you know, less of me, God, and more of you, Lord. And I want to share this because there's nothing that's going to be able to stop you. We are more than conquerors, but nothing will be able to separate you from the love of Christ, from the love of God through Christ Jesus. And a big part of what I've been able to say is, you know what? I, and I've been strong-minded my whole life. I've been strong-minded. But as I started to get closer to God, I started to have more security. I started to have more confidence. And I started to have more, you could say more of this, like, you know what? No matter what, as long as I'm planted in Jesus, as long as I'm planted in God, ain't nothing going to move me. See, Psalms chapter one, it says, blessed are those that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of the sinners or the, or the scornful. But his, his delight is what in the law of the Lord who meditates on it day and night. And we shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And I believe that rivers of water to me is pretty much the, the living water, right? The eternal life. Jesus said in John chapter four to the Samaritan woman, she, she said, hey, yo, girl, you know, I know you thirsty. You drinking out of that well, you're going to thirst again. But if you drip, drink out of the living water, which I offer, you shall never thirst again. I want to be planted, like it says in Psalm one, next to the living water. I want to be planted, not next to the ungodly. See, sometimes we might have family, close friends that might have our best interest at heart. But I promise you, if they don't hear from God, I promise you, if you just cut off the noise, yeah, you could let them talk, let them talk. But if you cut it off and you hear from God, God is going to bless and, and he, you're going to be so, you're going to be so blessed because, because God honors that, that, that faith and the obedience and also the trust. A lot of what the Bible says is trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in thy Lord with all the heart 
but leaning not on your own understanding. In my own understanding, I was I had too much going on. I had all these things going on, but when it came to the calling and ministry, I had to lean on God's understanding and trust that when he gave me peace to make the decision to go, I was going to go. And I'm glad I was used. I'm glad because we were able to be used as vessels to touch a family that really needed to hear from God and other believers that were equally yoked. Or at least believers that were on fire for the living God, for Jesus Christ. Okay, so, and, and also about trust, right? It says, it says to delight in thy Lord with all the heart, right? And delight in the Lord, sorry, it's Psalms 37, four, delight in the Lord and he shall grant you the desires of your heart. But what's so great about that verse is that it's not about what we desire. God's not just gonna, hey, grant you what you desire. He's gonna actually grant you what you should desire. That is directly from God. That is directly from him. But before that verse, if you go to verses two and three, it says to trust in the Lord. It says to feed on his faithfulness and dwell in the good land. There's this formula as you're delighting in the Lord to trust in him, to be able to feed on his faithfulness. Because in Timothy, it says that if we are faithless, God is always faithful. And then the, that, the next part of that verse, it says to, to dwell in the good land of the Lord. And then we're going to delight in him and he shall grant us the desires of our heart. Ezekiel 37, 27, it says that God will take out that heart of stone and give us a new heart of heart of flesh. So there's things that we might need to let go of. Jeremiah 17, God says, hey, I, the Lord, I search the heart. God searches your heart, but he tests the mind. He tests your faithfulness. He tests your trust in him. And when you go through those tests, those trials, if you go to James chapter one, verse two, it says he's going to count it all joy, knowing that the testing of our trials produce perseverance. I'm sorry, produce patience. And then it says, hey, let patience have its perfect work that you shall lack nothing. Go, go to that verse, James chapter one, verse two to four. So amazing. Once you can connect the revelations of God, uh, I want to share with you guys this verse because it's amazing. I want you guys to know that nobody, nobody can stop God's plan on your life. So let's go. Uh, this is Romans chapter eight. A lot of y'all probably know this. Romans chapter eight, verse 37. It says, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt, nor any other created thing whoo, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You guys see that? That's so amazing. What he's pretty much saying is, hey, there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. No creeping th thing, death, life, height, or death, angel, principality, no power. Nothing can be able to separate us from the love of God through Christ Jesus because of what Jesus did, what God did in the flesh, right? Philippians chapter 2, how he humbled himself as a bond servant before the cross and during the cross that the joy was set upon him. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, right? Verse 1 and 2 that the joy that was set upon him, despising, despising the shame. He said, yo, whatever. He did this for all of us. So I want you guys to know that nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God, but also nobody can stop God's plan for your life. I'm going to show you guys one more verse, Isaiah 22, 22. It says this, the key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder so he shall open up or open and no no one shall shut and he shall shut and no one shall open. Woo! All I got to tell you is when God opens the door, there will be no man that will be able to shut the door. And when God shuts the door, no man will be able to open it up. That is the power of God. When God opens a door, it is up to you to step forward, to step forward. And sometimes it might not be a door that we want to step into. And we don't know. We have no idea if it's from God, maybe in that moment. But God says to trust in him and to not lean on your own understanding. And if you have a relationship with Jesus, he going to give you some peace because he is the prince of peace, right? 
He's going to give you some peace to walk through the door, but he's also going to give you the strength, going to give you the courage. You're going to probably pray on it, fast on it. You're going to probably ask and seek the Lord's face. And if you actually have a pure heart, you're humble. You're lowly in the spirit. God's going to do a supernatural, might even push you through the door. Not forcefully. We have a free will. But if you say, God, take me. God, use me. God, guide me. God, be before me. Because if God is for you, who can be against you? I want you guys to know that no man will be able to shut the doors that God has opened. And the, the doors that God has opened, no man will be able to shut in Jesus' name. This is the power of the living God. Nobody can stop you from God's plan in your life. Nobody can stop the calling that is upon your life, but you, you, you can make the decision. And I could have not made a decision or I could have made a decision to not go anoint the house, dedicate the house, uh, be able to pray for every single one of the family members. There was like six or seven of them. And to just be able to just be used by God. And this is where, when I walked out that house, fulfillment, purpose, peace. God gave me so much of that. And I was fired up. I was ready to take on the day. I was focused on the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, it says to fix our eyes on Jesus, set our eyes on him, the author, the finisher, the defender, and the perfecter of our faith. Whenever I focus on God, when I'm making decisions, it, 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 it he starts to warn us right of things. You start to feel it in your spirit. You, you just got to cleanse your spirit. I mean, cleanse your heart. Take away, remove the stone, God, and give me a new heart of flesh, he says in Ezekiel. So guys, I want to just share this with you because I'm telling you this, nobody can stop you but you. The person that you, if you look into the mirror, that's the only person that can stop it. You could say the devil could try to do it, all this stuff. The, the thing about the devil is he ain't got no power, only the power over our life, only the power we give him. And people are like, well, the devil is running rampant, doing all these things, saying, you, know, you know, they're saying all this stuff about the enemy, the enemy, the enemy. That is true. The enemy might be doing some stuff to try to influence you, set some traps. But if you got Jesus, you got the strategic game plan. A lot of people out there, when they're trying to wrestle between flesh and blood, when the battle is in the spiritual, you're wrestling flesh and blood. You're fighting things in the carnal, in the flesh. That is you playing checkers with the devil. But when you got the strategic download, the game plan, the map, the blueprint, and God reveals to you how to see the future and move according to how to move in this very moment, and he gives you revelations on what to be protected from, you ain't going to be playing checkers with the devil. You're going to be playing chess, strategic, wisdom. We need wisdom nowadays, and we need the Holy Ghost. That's what we need. We need the filling of the Holy Spirit and we need the wisdom from God to be able to move that, Lord, maybe I might have fell and I might have fell into my feelings to make that decision. But what wisdom is, it's not saying you're going to make mistakes. It's saying you're going to be able to know how to get out of those mistakes because sometimes we might fall. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But I'm telling you today that if you just go to God, you seek the Lord and you say, God, I might have messed up. Lord, please guide me. I might have messed up because my feelings got into it. I might have got influenced by something in the demonic realm. Father God, fill me up. And God will be able to be strategic and you're going to be playing chess with the enemy. So I want, to, I want to tell you guys today, I want to leave this with you. Nobody can stop God's plan on your life but you. And it's up to you to decide, to decide, to decide and say, don't not go with me. I'm going to still follow Jesus. People might think I'm crazy. And I say, yo, if you're going to call me crazy, first off, I rebuke you. I reverse that word in Jesus' name. But I am crazy for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God is looking for some people that are ready, willing, vessels, ready to just say, you know what, God? I surrender in Jesus' name. Love you guys. You guys want to take on our soul fast? Links in the bio. You guys can check all the links down below. Hit the subscribe button, notification. Share this with a friend, anyone that need this. If this touched you, you guys can drop a comment. I like to look at the comments and answer questions as well. God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you soon. Take care.